If you've gotten this far in the series, you've seen that we can do a ton with macros and modulation. However, so far we've only used filters. So for this next video, we're gonna get out of filter world and into the world of reverb, format, and pan control. For this demo, we're gonna go into the drip line and then open up a kit called Circular Path. To start, we're gonna get rid of the fourth macro called Slice, renaming it Movement. Additionally, we're gonna get rid of the equalizer in the third insert of our master bus. And we're gonna clear out our sequencer and our LFO. For starters, we're gonna create formant modulation. For this demo, we wanna zone in on B2, C3, and D3. With that in mind, we're gonna apply our formant modulation to B2, and then copy it over to the subsequent sampler keys. Clicking on B2, we see our classic sample window. Next, we wanna click the Advanced tab, then turn Formant on. Now that it's active, we can hear turning the knob left or right will change the tone of our sample. To be proactive, let's turn on the C3 and D3 Formant controls as well. Back to our B2. Now let's assign modulation to our formant control. To do that, we're gonna double or control click our formant knob, then choose assign modulation, then choose one step modulation. Now let's go over to our modulation tab and adjust some of our sequencer parameters. For starters, let's hit the randomize button until we have a sequence that we like. Additionally, let's change the rate from 1 8th to 1 16th. Playing around with randomize a few more times, we'll likely get something that we really like. Now we want to be able to assign this modulation to our macro control. To do that, we first need to change our range slider from 100% to 0% by double clicking its center. Okay. Double or control clicking our assigned parameter, let's choose assign macro to modulation, then for movement. Navigating to our macros tab, we can now set the range. Let's do something that's not too extreme. Now we want to copy and paste all our modulation and macro data from B2 to C3 and D3. Before we do that, we need to pull our macro fader all the way down. Now we want to click the B2 sampler key. After that, we want to hold down shift and click D3. As you can see, B2, C3, and D3 are all lit up. This is exactly what we want. Next, we're going to double or control click the formant knob. Now we see we're given this fifth option, apply to selected keys. Let's click that. Navigating back to the macros tab, we can now see that all our macro and modulation data has been copied to a T. It is worth noting that despite these three assigned parameters being identical currently, we can adjust them individually if need be. Clicking our B2 sampler key, let's go back to the main tab. Next, we want to double or control click our pan knob, then choose assign modulation, then choose LFO. Now let's go to the modulation tab and choose our second modulation module, the LFO. For starters, let's turn on the retrigger so that every time we play our sample key, our modulation will be in time. When the polarity is set to uni, our pan will either go from center to right or center to left. To go from left to right, our polarity will need to be by. Let's go ahead and change that now.
Finally, let's set the wave to square so there's no whooshing between left and right. Now we're going to assign macro control. For starters, we need to double click our assign parameters range slider right down the middle so that no modulation happens by default. Next, we're going to double or control click our assign parameters knob, choose assign macro to modulation, and then choose for movement. Clicking the macro tab, let's adjust the pan's range so that the movement is not too wide. Now we're going to once again copy over our modulation. To do that, we want to turn our movement fader all the way down. Next, we're going to click our B2. Now we're going to shift and click our D3. And finally, we're going to double or control click our pan knob and choose apply to selected keys. Going back to our macros tab, we can once again see that all our panning has been copied over. While this macro does impact our selected keys, we can bring in additional samples and not have them be impacted by the macro. The final piece of this macro will be a pulsing reverb. To do that, we first want to turn our movement fader all the way down. Next, we want to go over to our mixer and in our third master bus insert slot, we want to insert a reverb. We want this reverb to be really cavernous, so we're going to change both the decay time and the size to be around 80%. Now we're going to set the dry wet to 0% so that by default, no reverb comes in. Next, we're going to double or control click our wet dry knob, choose assign modulation, and then choose 2 LFO. Navigating over to our modulation tab, we're going to double click our range slider, then we're going to double or control click our assign parameters knob, choose assign macro to modulation, and then choose movement. Finally, we're going to go over to our macros tab and adjust our wet dry range so that we can bring it in gradually. It is worth noting that because this reverb is on the master bus, it will affect our other sample keys. However, the panning and formant will not. You can now make multi-effects macros. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. We're excited to see what you make.